Hello. No. Hello and welcome to Roundtable Decision. I am your host, Wyatt Brickknoff. And you might notice that it's a little brighter and that I have an image behind me popped up. I did get a green screen and a um, lighting setup for Christmas. So I hope this is going to help production value in the future. But for now, I'm still going to keep things like I normally have done for a lot of my videos until I figure out how to use the green screen more effectively in the videos. But in the future, I'm going to use methods of both for in one video and one section for one of the videos because I think it's the best way of really showing my points across. But for this video, it was very uh, visual based. You had to see what I was seeing in order to really get what I was talking about. So I figured I would stick to my original setup for this video. But overall, I hope my videos will be much better now that I have a little bit more of production value for each of the videos. Well, this event, what's going on, uh, while it's still somewhat in the news or somewhat relevant to today's time. So this video I found on John Talk's channel, who I've listened to uh, for a while now, and um, who I'm um, subscribed to for a while, even though YouTube kind of unsubscribed me, which is kind of weird, but I've seen other people who have been unsubscribed from their YouTubers before. So um, anyway, but that's not what this video is particularly about. What I'm talking about in today's video is Rotten Tomatoes uh, score of the the of Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. And I've used many things that Jill Talks talked about in his video in my video here for what I have for you today. Because I thought they were rather interesting and I thought they should be exposed and talked about more than just one channel. Because I've only really seen John Talks talk about this issue, what I do think is very important. So you might be thinking, well, what is the issue? So when you go on Rotten Tomatoes, you'll see the tomato and audience score that's always been there and kind of been a staple when looking at the movies. For example, when I go through Xfinity, I kind of always see what these ratings are for a movie that looks interesting or that I might want to watch. And we all know that uh, Rotten Tomatoes has been criticized recently for their news about particular movies and most importantly The Last Jedi and other movies of sorts, more Disney owned movies that tend to be like hiding the actual information of the Rotten Tomato score. For example, The the Last Jedi got a high tomato critic rating but a lower audience score in general. But there was something very fishy going on on this particular audience score. As you can see from John Talk's video, the verified ratings were at 71,507 with an audience score of 86%. When I go back to here, you see the verified ratings are at 85,461, yet the audience score is still at 86%. And I'll quickly explain what it means to be verified ratings before I move on. To be a verified waiter, you have to purchase your ticket through Fandango and prove that you purchased it through, obviously, Fandango before you are a verified reviewer and that you can make your your uh, movie off of it because, obviously, you watched the movie. So, Fandango, to combat some of their recent issues, decided that a way to kind of make more accurate ratings is to make sure that you've actually watched the movie before you can do a rating about the movie, which makes sense. But right now, the only people who are allowed to do that are people who have purchased through their website or through their app on Fandango. So their verified ratings are all from people who have purchased tickets through it. And John Talks brought up an interesting point in his video where he mentioned that Paul Yanover, who is the president of Fandango, also worked at Disney and had many roles of Disney Online and other products, as you can see here. Before being named to his post at Fandango, Yanover served as executive vice president and managing director of Disney Online, where he oversaw all Disney branded Intentives on the internet and mobile web from disney.com to disney's suit of premium digital products including online games visual <laughs> visual virtual rewards network of family targeted sites and streaming services disney movies online and but on and on so he has also been known to know the disney president who was there now so 
if you put on your tinfoil hat, you might be thinking that Fandango is purposely making these reviews are are purposely manufacturing reviews to keep the audience score still at that 86%. Because you can see from uh, John Talk's video, it was at 71,000 and more, and now it's at 85,000 and more, yet it's still the same audience score. So it would be very unlikely that the amount of reviewers, which is more than uh, 10,000 more reviewers, wouldn't change the audience score by any percentage point. So it would mean that the same reviewer had to keep putting, or the same overall review had to keep being inputted in throughout the 10,000 plus more viewers. And someone through his channel where he has linked uh, Sheila Aliens gave him this Google Docs that I'm going to pull up and show you uh, that talks about just this issue. And you can see all the ratings that get updated. And it says down here it's updated automatically uh, every five minutes. And these are all from the verified audience members. And again, I highly encourage you to watch John Talk's video on this too. Because he did a very good job in showing. And I'm using many of the things he showed in his video and my video. Because like I said at the beginning, I do think that this needs to be talked about more. Because you, if obviously Rotten Tomatoes doesn't mean so much in today's ward compared to like politics or, or really big issues that are going on. But it is an everyday issue if a company is able to basically overtake another company in the way Disney has been able to. And if that is the case that they've been able to. But John noticed a lot of trends amongst the reviewers, uh, uh, the subjected verified audience reviewers. So you would see all their fives and threes here, but they're all kind of saying the same, same thing. Second time seeing, second time seeing, second time seeing, second time viewing. And then you can go down a little bit more and you'll see fives, a beautiful end, a beautiful way, a beautiful way. Then you see four, a bit convoluted, a bit jarring, a bit over the top, a bit predictable, a bit rushed, a bit slow, a bit slow, a bit slower, a blast. And you can go a little bit more and you see a couple of plot holes, a couple of slow moments, a couple of plot holes, a deeply enjoyable Star Wars, a deeply satisfying, a definite for any stars, a disappointing conclusion. So obviously you could see all their higher five and four reviews kind of saying the same thing. And there are apps available that you can randomly generate different uh, reviews based off of certain keywords that will spit it out. So if Fandango is doing this, it would be a very easy way to beef up the number and to keep that audience rate at 86% where the average movie viewer would think that is worth watching because the 86% on a test is overall pretty good for most people. So again, I used a lot of the information in John Talk's video, but I thought this needed to be talked about more and a huge shout out to his channel. And I highly suggest that you subscribe to his content, especially if you are a big movie person or anyone who wants to be brushed up on pop culture. Thank you for watching.